A uniform torsion rod is subjected to an end torque T as shown in figure. The rod has a diameter equal to 30 mm, length L equal to 1.5 meter, maximum shear stress in the rod is 60 megapascal, how much energy is stored in the rod and the value of G is given as 70 gigapascal. Since we have a uniform rod here, the strain energy stored is given as T square into L divided by 2 times of G divided by polar moment of inertia J. The diameter here is equal to 30 mm, length equal to 1.5 is 1500 mm, maximum shear equal to 60 and the value of G is given as 70 gigapascal. Using the value of tau max and diameter, we can calculate here first torque and the rest value we are knowing to us. So let's first calculate here what is the torque. For a solid shaft, the torque is given as pi by 16 into d cube into tau maximum. So we have pi by 16. Diameter will be equal to 30 and we have to make a cube of it. Maximum shear will be equal to 60. Solve this equation, you will get a torque equal to 318 into 10 to the power 3 newton mm is same as 318 newton meter. In the equation of the strain energy, all value will preferred in SI unit. So you have to use the value of torque equal to 318, length equal to 1.5, G value is equal to 70 into 10 to the power 9 and the polar moment of inertia is pi by 32 D to the power 4. So torque is same as 318 square, length equal to 1.5, we have 2, G is equal to 70, 10 to the power 9, pi by 32 is the polar moment of inertia and diameter is 0 0.03 meter. This answer is 13.62 Newton meter or is same as equal to joules. So this is a standard procedure to find out the value of strain energy in the case of torsion. A steel rod whose one end is fixed and the other end is twisted through an angle theta equal to 60 degree. The length of the rod is given as 1 meter radius equal to 10 mm elastic deformation energy. That is the strain energy you have to find out and the value of G is given as 82 gigapascal. So again information is given here to calculate the value of torque. Because of a uniform cross section, the strain energy is given as T square into L divided by 2 times of G divided by polar moment of inertia J. Theta you have to always use in radian and we have given the value of theta equal to 60 degree. So you have to convert into radian by multiplying pi divided by 180 degree. So theta in radian will be equal to pi by 3 is radian and the length is given here equal to 1 meter that will be equal to 1000 mm. Radius is same as equal to diameter is equal to 20 mm and the value of G is also given. Value of G is equal to 82 gigapascal. First we calculate here the value of the torque using the torsion formula we have T divided by J is same as equal to G multiplied by theta divided by L. So we have torque is equal to G is 82 gigapascal. If we use here again the SI unit directly the torque will come in Newton meter. So we will con continue with the SI unit. We have 82 giga is 10 to the power 9. Theta is radian is pi divided by 3 and divided by the length. So length will be equal to 1 meter multiplied by j, j is equal to pi by 32 and diameter equal to 20, 20 is same as 0 0.02 and the power is 4. So this answer will directly come in Newton meter and you will get this answer close to 1348.84 Newton meter. Substitute this torque in the equation and we will continue again with SI unit. So we are practicing here the SI unit. Torque is equal to 1348.8 and we have to make a square of it. Length equal to 1 divided by 2 times g is equal to 82 is 10 to the power 9 that will be Pascal. Polar moment of inertia is pi. 32 will shift in numerator. And diameter is same as equal to 0 0.02 and power is 4. Solve this you will get dust energy directly into Newton meter. So we have u is equal to 705.18 that will be Newton meter. 
is same as equal to joules. A step shaft is shown below is subjected to torque of 10 Newton meter. Value of G is given as 80 gigapascal strain energy in Newton mm. We have to find out. We have given the length and the diameter of each shaft here. So at free end, the torque applied is T that equal to 10 Newton meter. A to B will take as a shaft 1 and B to C will take as a shaft 2. So we have diameter D1 equal to 50 mm, length L1 equal to 100 mm, diameter D2 is equal to 25, length L2 is equal to 100 mm. Since here both the shaft of uniform diameter, so individually we will calculate their value as U1 and U2 or otherwise you can use U is equal to summation of T square L divided by 2 times of GJ. Value of G is remain same but the value of J is changed here, value of L is also same. So first of all you have to find out here what is the torque in the section 2 and the torque in section 1. So we'll make a cut here and we'll develop the FBD as shown here. This point is same as equal to B, this point equal to C. At this point we have torque is acting. Let's say we have torque T is a clockwise torque is equal to 10 Newton meter. So the torque T1 you have to show in the opposite direction to balance it. So we'll show this torque in a counterclockwise direction. So this torque is same as equal to T1. This time we'll use the summation of the total torque must equal to 0. This value will take as a negative value and T1 will take as a positive value. So this time we'll take the anticlockwise positive. T1 is anticlockwise is positive. T is equal to clockwise is negative. So we have T1 will be same as equal to 10. One more value of T2 you required here. So we'll make a cut at this point. So we'll develop the BD for section 2. In that case again at C you have to show the same torque equal to T that equal to 10 Newton meter and we have internal torque is equal to T2. Now only one torque is acting here so we can directly write here T2 is equal to 10 Newton meter. So T1 and T2 is same, length is same. Even the value of 2 is common, g is common. So only you have to calculate the value of j. And j is equal to pi by 32 d to the power 4. So that also we can calculate. So let me expand this first. We have u is equal to t1 square multiplied by l1 divided by 2 times of g multiplied by pi multiplied by d to the power 4. That is d1 to the power 4 and 32 will shift in numerator plus we have t2 square l2 32 divided by 2 times of g multiplied by pi into d2 to the power 4. So we can take out here t1 square common then length is also common either l1 or l2 32 is also common divided by 2 times even the g is also common, pi is also common. So what is left inside the bracket is 1 upon d1 to the power 4 plus 1 upon d2 to the power 4. So I will prefer here the SI unit, my answer will come in Newton meter and then we will write the answer in Newton mm form. So we have t1 is equal to 10 Newton meter, length is equal to 0.1 that is 100 mm multiplied by 32 divided by 2 times value of g is given as 80 that has to be taken as pascal is multiplied by 10 to the power 9 divided by pi into 1 upon d1 d1 is same as 50 mm is 0 0.05 to the power 4 plus d2 is 25 is 0 0.025 to the power 4 solve this you will get dust energy equal to 1.73 into 10 to the power minus 3. That will be Newton meter. Multiplying by 1000, you will get dust energy equal to 1.73 Newton mm.
A tubular bronze having G is equal to 45 gigapascal shaft is shown in the figure as an outside diameter of 36 mm inside diameter equal to 30 mm torque at B is equal to 600 Newton meter which one is shown clockwise and TC is equal to 400 Newton meter which is shown anti-clockwise act on the shaft at B and C in the direction shown determine the total energy used stored in the shaft let's say here A to B we have shaft is 1 B to C we have another shaft equal to 2 L1 equal to 0.5 meter L2 is equal to 1.25 meter outside diameter is given as 36 mm and inside diameter is given as 30 mm so this one is the case of hollow shaft since we have a shaft of uniform cross section total energy u will be equal to u1 plus u2 that is we have u1 is same as equal to t1 square multiplied by l1 divided by 2 times of g which is same multiplied by j1 plus we have t2 square multiplied by L2 divided by 2 times of G multiplied by J2 so first of all here J1 and J2 they are identical value because we have uniform shaft here and the value of J we can calculate as pi by 32 DO to the power 4 minus DI to the power 4 that is same as equal to pi by 32 we have DO is equal to 36 to the power 4, DI is equal to 30 to the power 4. So this answer is approximately equal to 85.37 into 10 to the power 3. And the unit of polar moment of inertia is mm to the power 4. So J1 and J2 both are known to us. So this time we have J1 is same as equal to J2. Then we require the value of T1 and the value of T2. To find out the value of T1 here, we will make a cut at this section. At C, we have anticlockwise torque that equal to 400. So this value will take as a positive value is 400 Newton meter. At B, we have clockwise torque. Clockwise torque will take as a negative value is minus 600. Internal torque is we represent equal to T1. So we'll take here the summation of total torque must equal to zero. Anticlockwise torque will take its positive value. So we have T1 is positive. Then we have minus 600 plus 400. That is equal to zero. So in this case, we obtain the value of T1 is equal to 200 Newton meter. Answer is positive means assumed direction is correct. And to find out the value of T2, we'll make a cut here. So this one is a straightforward. We have T2 equal to 400 Newton meter. So at C we have a anticlockwise torque, and this anticlockwise torque will take as a positive value. So the internal torque will represent as a clockwise torque this time will be equal to T2. So this value of T2 is same as 400 Newton meter. But whether we have a clockwise torque or anticlockwise torque that doesn't matter here because this term is a T square square of it positive and negative is always positive so denominator is common to both here so we'll take out here denominator common that is we have one upon two times this time we're going to use the si unit value of g is equal to 45 so we have 45 into 10 to the power 9 multiplied by j1 j1 is 85.37 into 10 to the power 3 into 85.37 into 10 to the power 3 it's a mm square so you have to multiply by 10 to the power minus 12 and in numerator we have t1 t1 is same as 200 so we have 200 square multiplied by l1 l1 is equal to 0.5 plus we have t2 square that equal to 400 so we have 400 square multiplied by l2 l2 is 1.25 so this answer will directly come in Newton meter. So total energy will come out to be 28.62 is Newton meter. Torque T is applied to the uniform rod AC as shown in the figure. The rod is attached to the rigid support at end A and C. 
determine the total energy you stored in the rod express your answer in terms of length l polar moment of inertia j shear modulus g and the angle of twist equal to 5 now since here we are interested to know the strain energy in the angle of twist equal to 5 what we'll do here we'll convert the given arrangement into the spring arrangement now the torsion formula this time is t divided by j will be equal to g multiplied by theta divided by l and we have torsional stiffness kt will be t divided by theta is equal to g multiplied by j divided by l so using the torsional stiffness here you can convert the shaft 1 which is between a and b and the shaft 2 which is between b and c into the spring now you know the strain energy u is given as 1 by 2 force multiplied by dl and in the case of the torsion here we can write this equation as 1 by 2 multiplied by torque multiplied by deformation equal to theta now we again want to write down this term in the form of kt so what we'll do here we'll divide it by theta and we'll multiply it by theta so we have strain energy u is equal to 1 by 2 this term of t by theta can be written as kt multiplied by theta square angle of twist that equal to phi which is same as equal to theta since we have a uniform diameter the polar moment of inertia is remain same we have kt1 is given as g multiplied by j divided by l so g and j is same for both so we have g multiplied by j divided by l1 and we have kt2 is equal to g multiplied by j divided by l2 now you have to find out here the equivalent stiffness of the two shaft for that one we should know what are the two displacement variable at this point we have displacement variable we equal to theta so we have torque and the displacement variable equal to theta at this point here we have theta a is equal to zero so we have two displacement variable for kt1 is theta and theta a equal to zero and we have value of theta c is equal to zero so for kt1 one displacement variable is theta and the other displacement will be theta a equal to zero for spring 2 we have one displacement variable equal to theta and second variable is theta b that equal to zero when both the displacement variables are same the arrangement is parallel so even it looks like a series arrangement it is a parallel arrangement and therefore we have equivalent stiffness kt will be equal to kt1 plus kt2 that is same as equal to g into j that is common is 1 upon l1 plus 1 upon l2 and is same as g multiplied by j into l1 here is 2 times of l so we have 1 upon 2 times of l plus l2 is simply l that is 1 upon l so we can take out here 2l as a lcm so we have l plus 2l that equal to 3 times of l divided by 2l square so we'll get this answer equal to 3 times g j divided by 2 times of l so we'll use the last formula here that is u is equal to 1 by 2 kt theta square so we have u that is a strain energy equal to 1 by 2 kt is given as 3 times of g multiplied by j divided by 2 times of l multiplied by theta square so finally we have strain energy in the given case will be equal to 3 divided by 4 multiplied by g multiplied by j divided by l multiplied by theta square the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here